What's up guys and gals? So today's project is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we are actually going to turn this old tree branch and a couple of 1x4s into this. All right, so you ready to learn how we do it? Super easy, let me walk you through it. Let's get started. So let's start with the branch. Um, really any branch that you find out that, uh, that is dried, um, that you think is kind of a neat looking branch, um, just bring it in, let it dry some more, and then one of the first things that we are going to do, because we're going to be handling this, we're going to be cutting it, um, is I'm going to put some, just some spray urethane just over the, the loose bark. That way it actually stays on. And then we'll let that dry. All right, so let's cut some wood. So for this project, we're only going to be using one by fours. Uh, we're going to start off cutting the 20 inch boards and we're going to need six of those. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this, but for beginners, I would suggest, and this is how I'm going to be setting up this video, to just cut our pieces into square stock first. We'll get all of our pieces cut and then we'll put our 45 degree angles on. Now you can do this. Um, you know, by putting your 45s on at this point, if you'd like. But again, for beginners, it may be a little easier to do it this way. Okay, so the reason why I chose 20 inch and nine inch for the dimensions of this rectangle um, is because using two one by fours, it gave us the largest box. And of course, you can change these dimensions if you would like, you just may need a little bit more material. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the nine inch blocks. Now I'm gonna show you something with this stop block that I have set at nine inches. I'm gonna slow it down here, right there. So if you'll notice how that board lifted up with the saw, what will happen if you're using a stop block pretty close to your blade, the inside tooth will actually catch as it raises. So that's why it's important for the uh, saw blade to come to a complete stop before you remove the piece. Okay, so now that our material is blanked out, now it's time to put some 45s on. We have 6 20 inch and 6 9 inch. So with the material upright against the fence, we are just going to put 45 degree angles on the edge of each board. Now what we're wanting to do is to make sure to face the cut angle towards the fence on each one. That way we have a nice uh, 45 on both sides facing the correct direction, as you can see here. Now it's also important when you're lining this up, most of these saws will have a shadow cut or some type of a laser. Just line that up with the edge, the very tip, and make that 45 degree cut. We want all of our material to be the same length. Okay, so all of the nine inch cut. So let's hit these 20s up. Let's get some 45s on. Quick tip, if you'll notice that I'm actually removing this piece of scrap every time that I make a cut, this is to keep the saw from actually catching one of those pieces of scrap and kicking it out. So with all of our pieces cut, we are ready to actually start gluing this up into our rectangles. All right, so painter's tape. Love this stuff, use it all the time. This is gonna be great for making perfect miter joints here. So perfect 45s. Just putting a little piece on this corner, gonna line this up just the way that I need it. Then I'll add my glue. And the tape is actually gonna make for a great pivot point. There we go, and we can align it just the way that we want. And then we'll throw a couple of brad nails in. And once this glue dries, it'll be perfect. 
Look at that perfect edge there. Okay, so when we go to put the top on, we're going to do this a little different. I'm going to go ahead and add my glue, get it lined up the best that we can there, and if you'd like, you can use a square. You don't necessarily have to, but um, I'm just going to show you there that uh, square does come in handy. I did not put the tape on this because I'd like to be able to move it around to get everything perfectly lined up. All right, so all of our boxes are put together. And now it's time for my favorite part. Notice sarcasm there. Sanding. So, can't get away from sanding. What we're going to be doing is just knocking off any sharp edges that we may have. Um, just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Okay, so once we get it sanded to the way that we would like it, now I'm just going to space these to kind of see what it would look like, you know, spaced onto a wall. So we're going to be adding our branches next. I went with a four inch gap. You know, you can um, space them however you, that you would like, whatever fits your space or whatever look that you would like. Time to bring in the branch. Now this is where you're going to have to get creative um, because all branches are going to be different. So once you've picked out the branch that you're actually wanting to use for this project, you're gonna to have to maneuver it around. And that's why I added that spacing. You want to be able to kind of envision what it's gonna look like once we start making our cuts. All right, so now let's make those cuts. So I'm actually using a Japanese pull saw here. It was just kind of what was handy, uh, but you can actually use any type of saw for this. Uh, even, you know, your simple hacksaw. What you want to try to do is line it up with the inside of the box. That way everything kind of fits flush. So now that I have the limb the way that I want it for my base box, I'm actually going to pull my middle box down just to kind of get an idea of where things would line up. Now it does not have to be perfect. You do not have to keep going in sequence. I'm actually going to be cutting out parts of this and um, kind of designing it how I would like. But you do want to cut all of the edges that stick out of the sides completely off. And once your middle box is laid out the way that you would like it, you just move your top box down and start on it. Now the top will probably have a lot more smaller branches and things like that. And you can kind of snip those off to get the exact look that you want. I wanted these to to actually stick out from the top of the box, whereas in our previous boxes, everything was inside. I wanted the top to kind of come out and around. So what you're seeing me do here is I'm starting to attach the material. Now I'm using CA glue, which is just a fancy super glue and an activator. You can use regular super glue. You can use uh, even hot glue for this, uh, for this project. Essentially, this is just a craft. And you can see that, um, you know, I'm laying everything out the way that I want it. And that's the cool thing about this project. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can add in little limbs like this wherever you would like it. Just glue them in. This glue dries completely clear. Nobody can tell. Once you get everything just the way that you want it, touch it up with some sandpaper. If you gotten any little glue here or there just touch it up and get it ready for uh, a finish of your choice now I'm just using spray finish for this beginner project but you can use any type of finish or stain that you would like and there you have it and now we have the finished product this is awesome this is literally made out of two one by fours and an old branch 
you enjoyed this video, if you've learned anything, if you'd like to see more, make sure to smash that subscribe button. I have plenty of these type of projects to come. Thanks for watching.